Hiya, this is Liam Belinda from Chateau Marais Hello. again. Hello. Um, what we decided to do was give a second part to uh, a background of some of the history of the buildings that we've got on the site. You may the remember. The first one was so popular. Yeah, it, yeah <laughs> a lot of people really liked it. Um, Stuff so, we do know, did know, and didn't know. Yeah. So the, mysteries. <laughs> the first one kicked off with the oldest building on, or the oldest construction we believe, on the site, which is the Sky Garden. And so what we thought we'd do it is chronological order. So the next eldest building on the site is the Donjon, which is the building you can see behind us here now. That very tall building with the roof that needs some attention behind <coughs> our heads. I think it's important you understand the, the reason why we think that's the second uh, eldest building. First of all, the local history society, historic society have said that they believed it was built sometime between 1360 and 13. 1390 um, and that would tie in with our earlier theory about the Knights Templar <coughs> being disbanded, uh, the Inquisition happening and the Sky Garden being built in a, penta a pentagon shape or pentagonal as I've now been told is a real word. Jeez. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, and I'll carry on with that in a minute. So Lee, in terms of what we think is the chrono chronological order of the constructions on this site, so I think you've said to me that you, well, we think possibly that the building materials, when that was deconstructed, that ancient tower, that possibly those were used to build the donjon behind us. Do you think that's the case? I think it's a reasonable assumption because we're so remote here mm. and back in the sort of late 1300s, 1400s, <coughs> moving very heavy stone materials around was no mean task. It's and a bit so like actually, the pyramids, isn't it? I'm just yeah. thinking, you know, that was difficult. But that was even longer ago. We're also in a remote location, so to bring <laughs> materials from a long way away wouldn't make any sense if you already had a load on site that you just smashed a tower down. Well, like these days, you just you just, just reuse, reuse, reuse them. That's what you? we're doing. Makes yeah. perfect sense. So we think they reused mm. the materials to build the donjon. Now, the donjon um, is a French word. It means basically a gatehouse or watchtower or some <clears> fortified. <throat> living accommodation. Castle Keep is, Castle a word Keep is another used. one. It's not mm. a dungeon. No. Although there were holding places for baddens to be banged up in. Brigands and villains. Brigands and villains. Marauders. And brigands and marauders, yes. Mm. Right, so before we head off and take a bit of a look, um, which is primarily what we're going to film today. Yeah, I think we just have a walk around the building. We'll just and... point out the interesting features, if you like, of the donjon what we know about them, what we have assumed about them. But just one little correction I wanted to make. So I know that in a previous film, or at least one, that we've mentioned where we are in France. So actually, the region that we're in is a very big region called Nouvelle-Aquitaine. It really is huge in the southwest of France. And actually, the Vienne, so La Vienne, is actually a department, uh, not a region. So I just wanted to make that correction. So should we, should we head off and show everybody yeah, a I bit think, more of the donjon. I think for the next bit, what we're going to do is take it in terms of filming, um, so that Belinda some will be wobbly, some will not be. The, excuse my wobbly my bits, bits again. Wobbly. Someone was very kind and said there was no wobbly Aww. bits, which I'm very grateful for. So Thank thanks you. for your support. Any wobbly cucumbers? Only wobbly cucumbers. We, we don't want to go into the use of cucumbers, Belinda. Not here and now. That's a whole different ball game. We have made mention before on a previous film of some graves. Uh, there are two very, very ancient, what we believe to be graves. They're just up there tucked behind that wall. Now the reason, seriously, the reason we're not showing you today is because um, our lawnmower has broken down. It broke down, at, well it was already broken at the start of the season for some reason. And honestly, the grass is so high around there that you couldn't even see them. So we're going to save that for another occasion. Um, but I just wanted to start off. I've got some beautiful flowers here. Yes. Um, and obviously this is the donjon. Uh, and I think of note is its roof, which you will have seen before on drone footage and uh, previous um, episodes of Escape to the Chateau DIY. We do have one or two areas for minor repairs and they are still awaiting repair and that's because of the confinement that we're in at the moment but that will be done very soon. Okay the first thing to say about the donjon really is you can see it's a building of two parts. There's the main square piece and then what looks to me like this cat slide roof portion has been added on later. Um, also what's worthy of note is the roof 
um, when you go inside, and we're going to cover the inside as a separate piece of film, but you can see that the beams, those two big brown beams that run right the way across and span the whole width of the building, they were there to carry a lot of load and they're castellated at the top, which suggests they were carrying trusses and joists to carry another floor. Um, and when we get round the other side, you'll see why there's a door around there. Um, so we do believe this went up at least one, if not two, more stories. I'm going to just take the film up, Lee, so we, yeah, we I'll can carry see. On talking. Uh, um, that, one... So you think it would have gone, what, at least one more floor? So where the more... roof is now, that yeah. would have been another floor. My, yeah, wow, and then the high. roof would have been on top of that. Yeah, OK. And what it's described in one of the books that we've got, uh, of the time it said this was a very significant chateau fort for the area so i thought we'd start with the uh i thought we'd start with the entrance modeled by the lovely belinda oh, so as you can see oh yeah i put that there i found it it's one of angela's flowers from the wedding that was here oh, that's our daughter yeah that's so can... three years ago now hey. i'll pop it back <laughs> yeah so yeah, so you've got a set of double height doors and also double width. Um, this would have been important. <laughs> Not me double width. Double width, doors. double width Belinda. Double. <laughs> yeah, um, you can see by the head beam, the two um, tour shares on the walls either side, I added, I picked them up in an auction in England, sprayed them up and stuck in, they're not original. The beam is original and in the center of the beam, you'll see some signage. And we doubt that's got any authenticity to it either. It looks like someone's, that little square of black, that's been added later. Looks good though. Yeah, it's all right, I leave it. It's fine, it's all part of the story. So a lot of the detailing on this building are very ancient stonework, but what you can see here, there's a, a, a lintel here and here, a sill and a lintel, and the, the was an original window, and you can see from the stone stonework around the sides, um, and this has been filled in. There's a date on the inside of the building that says this is from 1821. So we know that got filled in then. And I guess at that point is when it changed use yeah. into a barn. And so I'm also so guessing... So they would have just purposed it for animals, really? Yeah, yeah. But and so obviously they didn't want the animals to escape, so they just filled the windows, filled the windows in. in yeah. Keep it, yeah. But what's really interesting is if you look above the lintel, there's actually an archway. Oh, yeah. And if you look below the sill... This was actually, this all, this came right the way down to yeah, the ground. Yeah. So the window measures from, from here to the arch about 2.2 metres, but from the top of the arch to the floor is 3.7 metres. So what you've actually got is a very tall, fairly narrow doorway. And we believe that this is because a mounted rider on horseback could have ridden straight in through the door and bolted the door as a form of defence if they were being chased or if it was bad weather or something. So they ride straight in and dismount inside the building. So over the double doors entrance, you could see there was another older window, much older. This is a seating window, so a watch out, a lookout would have sat in that window, but I, that's been blocked up. And I'm guessing the blocking up of the windows was all done at the same time, around about 1821. And then if you look at the window to the left, mm -hmm. Yeah. That was also blocked up, but I think that's a much older window because you? the if you look at the window, um, oh yeah, the sill. The, si the sill is a very it's ornate, really, it's really carved sill, it's really carved, and then the lintel above is a very square finished lintel, which would have been a very early way of finishing a window recess. There's there's lots of holes everywhere. Excuse my ignorance, but what? Why would they have had these holes? Are they everywhere? Well, I think what they were for is to to build a high building. They didn't have scaffolding towers, so what they would have done is put some pieces of wood, cantilevered out from the stonework, and then laid a, a planked walkway above it. Oh, so literally like, then, a, like an ancient scaffolding? Ancient scaffolding, yeah, and then built oh, up to the next level, yeah. and then put more cantilevers in, put a walkway over it, and then built up to the next well, level, and so on so and so forth. Right, because obviously if they were building another story above this... Yeah. And they wouldn't have bothered filling him in on the way down because this wasn't considered that important back in the day. The, um, At some point in his crosses. life, yeah, the crosses that you see, they're like iron or wrought iron. And I think what, what's happened is the building suffered some damage and started to fall out. It probably when they took the extra story off, the sides of the building started to ease out. So what they are is 
tie bars and they would have been introduced late 1800s I would have thought. I remember those in um in South London. Yeah, there's on, a lot of them Victorian after houses. for bomb damages yeah, and stuff. Definitely. Yeah, So they would have just put this tie bar between both sides of the building, yeah. put the crosses on, tie, heated the bar up so it expanded, tightened the nuts down and let it, let it cool. And as it gradually cools, it brings the sides of the building back closer together. That's a relief. Moving round to the flank wall of the building, you can see at high level there was a doorway Up behind there. that tree, yeah? Yeah. And the, that big lump that's sticking out is what's there. cantilevered and yeah, holding up the fireplace at first yeah. floor level in the building. There's another little window And there's up another there. little window there. Now, what we don't understand is there's a Napoleonic map that shows this building extending all the way down there so, oh, down through there. that barn. That barn wasn't there. And the, the date of the map we've got is 1832. And you can see that wall there is not a retaining wall for the garden. That is a very strong wall that was probably part of the construction of the original building. And we think the building was in two parts. The donjon part was the grander part, which is where the Lord lived. And the secondary part here is where his force, his gang of men would have lived over this one. Yeah, yeah, roughly there. And you can see there's like loads and loads of stones just behind where Belinda is and uh, these stone steps which are really too grand just for for garden access me and the as dog. always yeah who's, the dog is now an honorary cat so Lee's coming up the ancient stairs right and this is you can we're see, at the back now you can see from here better the, the door where it was filled in and we think this would have gone right the way down here um, Amazing building, Lee. It's fantastic, yeah. isn't it? From all angles, you know, I love to, I love to photograph this. Actually, yeah. such an interesting shape. It's a really interesting. When we get to do the inside, it's really interesting inside. And then come along. Let's have a look over here. You're walking by the ancient potato bed now. The ancient potato bed with the ancient, yeah, old, age old brick. <laughs> <laughs> There's a couple of ancient deck chairs over there. Yeah, so we're ahead of the time, these guys. You know. <laughs> Well, they even made medieval provision for an electrical power supply. Um, so they were six, seven hundred years ahead of their time. Oh, so they did! So we believe this was another window and it looks like that was blocked up at the same time. Oh, yeah. The window up there is a lookout oh, window on. and it's got an actual seat inside where a knight oh. would have sat and watched. The yeah. holes we've previously explained, I think, are for yeah. scaffolding going across. Oh. And then here there's a doorway. Uh, I don't know if this would have originally been a door, but there's definitely a stone capital around here. Built in what, over arch. those bricks? Yeah, over the bricks. And I think what that would have been, there might have been an ancient doorway here, which they've lifted out and yeah. redone the bricks to, or yeah. actually made slightly taller so you can get in. Mm. And that's a, a recent addition, I think, probably the last 200 years. So what we have found out about the history, what we do know, um, is uh, the first inhab named inhabitant was somebody called Jean I of Marais. And in fact, his coat of arms, his insignia, is actually on a significant stone fireplace at first floor level over in that donjon. It's incredible. It's, yeah. you, you gasp when you walk in because there's a huge monumental fireplace, literally high up. Um, so we know that Jean I of Marais lived there yeah um and we imagine that they entertained he entertained there he had family there they cooked in there that that's all we can imagine that's all we know for the time being we do know that um we first thought that the ground floor was for the sort of serfs and the peasants and the upper floor was where the lord lived and the floor above that was his bedroom and living quarters but we've since realized that there's a grand fireplace in the in the ground floor and that could have been oh, yes. used as a meat and greet banqueting facility. And then a meat grilling facility. Meat, meat grilling facility, yeah. And above that might have been where he held, held audience to anyone that needed important business to attend or whether he kind of held judgment over the vagabonds and bandits Riggins. of the area. Um, and then the floor above would have been um, his solar room or his salon which is like the like kind of, we call it a salon and bedroom now, but in a living room, it's actually a bedroom. So in the history of that, that building there, it's been like a baronial lord's sort of watchtower place with an army in it. 
it then we became living it's quarters. Very small army, Lee. Yeah, very small <laughs> army. Yeah, you're, you were talking about five to ten people. Oh, okay. Yeah, they're not talking a massive army. No. And then um, it would have been uh, a home at one point until the main chateau was built. Uh, then it became a barn. Um, then we acquired it and we've used it for well, I don't know everything. We've got <laughs> we've got Wi-Fi in there. We've had discos yeah. in there. We've had a wedding yeah. party in there. We've had fashion show in there. Yeah. We've had cars being repaired in there. Yeah. Um, welding going on. Uh, carpentry workshop. Carpentry workshop. Uh, barbecues. Barbecues. Yeah. yeah. It's had a load of uses, and it will have lots more. Music event. It's had oh, traditional yes. jazz in there. All, all of which I can imagine the old knights of old would have been dancing around so, there in their aprons and and what they call mm, those things that they um, used to wear. Coat of armor. Coat of armor. Chainmail. Chainmail. Jiggling around. Jiggling around in their chainmail to. <laughs> To Beck's Beederbeck or someone. <laughs> it's just right, it reminded me of all these knights dancing around in chainmail. It's like spam a lot. We've actually got and recreated spam a lot here. You could be eating that for dinner. Um, so, <laughs> so you might have seen on on um, Escape to the Chateau DIY. So we have now had the floor concreted. So we've got a lovely level-ish floor now. Uh, the roof it is going to be repaired oh, very the soon. Roof. Uh, the it, roof. As we've said a million times over now, it was going to be repaired. We did have functions booked in there, which have now had to be postponed, which is very very sad. But. It's there for the future. It it will be ready. It will be open for your next party, our Anyone, next event. Anyone's Anyone, next party. Come and see us, um, and we look forward we were, to seeing you again. We were just Chateau. on the crest of getting it really peachy, and then lockdown right. happened. It's same story for loads of people out there. But we're it's ready, not just us. ready for the next season, uh, ready to rear in to go. So once again, thanks ever so much for watching us. Yeah. Uh, we hope you're enjoying our little history tour of Chateau Mahai. We do have more to show you. We're not experts. We're still researching it. Lee's actually now taken to reading books. I mean, that's the first. So, and it's all for you because you're worth it. See you soon. Thanks for your support. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.